very glad you could join us uh, for part two of the Ref Show. Mark House is here, Keith Hackett's still here. Um, we'll look at the championship. Uh, it's good to delve into the championship. There's always something there to talk about. You were at a game, uh, a Lancashire derby. I was at a game, a Yorkshire derby, and uh, there's plenty to discuss following those. But first of all, Crystal Palace West Ham. Mark Clattenburg in charge as we complete our Premier League roundup. And Alan Pardew was less than happy about sending off in that game. Dwight Gale, two poor challenges, two yellow cards. Should there even be a discussion on that? No, I mean, listen, we're looking at, we're talking again about Mark. You know, we're talking about getting the key match decisions correct. And if you look at that game, there was three big decisions. Obviously, the penalty, the, t the two yellow cards and sent off, and the retake. And in my opinion, Mark Gordon, absolutely spot on. He's absolutely, you know, refereeing extremely well. And if you look at Alan Pardew's uh, comments not too long ago, he was criticising the referee for not sending um, Arsenal's Coquelin off for, for two yellow card challenges. Now, these two reckless challenges were absolutely nailed on. I talk about managing the game and managing the players and managing incidents. Well, that them two challenges you cannot manage. Mark has to show two yellow cards because it's you know they're, they're, they're poor challenges, and Mark's correct in, in dismissing um, Gal for two yellow cards. Surprisingly, Pard, you said it spoiled the game. Keith, you've got an issue there with him. Well, I mean, uh, I, I worry about a manager who clearly hasn't seen the DVD before he's, uh, he's made his comments. So in defence of him, he's probably now regretting what he said. My concern was that he was in, almost in, implying that a senior referee should ignore a second yellow. He can't do that. He has to apply the law. I mean, there's no question that these were two reckless challenges. My view is that if the manager understands the player, and this is in other games as well, and he's received a yellow and he's still having a bit of a chip at either the referee or he's chipping at the opponents, uh, then the opportunity is get him off the pitch and, and bring on the sub. And, and that's what Pardew should have done. And if you look at Gal's you know, body language walking off the pitch, he knew exactly what he'd done. He knew exactly what he'd done. But the question for me is, we've just seen Jose Mourinho, you know, receive a £50,000 fine and a, a suspended one-match um, stadium ban. Now, is, is the FA going to take action with Alan Pardew's comments? Is he questioning the integrity of the referee? Yeah. He's perhaps not, but he's severely critical of him. Severely that. critical. So, you know, you've, you've, got, you, you've got to be consistent. You know, with retrospective action with players off the ball incidents, and it's exactly the same with the managers. Perhaps Pardew was coloured by the result. West Ham. Well, I, I have a, a view, and I think that somewhere along the line, um, the, the comments by managers post match about refereeing incidents has, has been suppressed. And I think we've seen that. I think we saw that a little bit with Sam Allardyce, because yeah. I'm thinking in my time he would have had a real rant because it's cost them the points. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I, I think this is now in a zone where you cannot make those comments, and if you make those comments, then the FA need to be consistent. My view is yeah. Pardew should be charged yeah. uh, because he's made comments which are unacceptable. OK, right. Uh, good, strong views either side there. And I, I'd like to pick up on the point about the retaken penalty because we all watch games regularly, and I don't think there's a penalty taken where there isn't encroachment either by the attacking side, the defending side, or even both. Now here, we, we saw a retake quite correctly. When Keith was, you know, our, our general manager, we, we, we sat down at, uh, didn't we, at, at the video, and, and Keith yeah. insisted that we, we all stand in the same position. And if, and if, a, if a, a player came past us before the penalty kick had been taken, then it had to be a retake. But if they didn't come past us, because you have to use your common sense mm. somewhere along the line, we didn't have a retake. So Mark was absolutely spot on. He could have had a, a, a second retake, another couple of more inches, and I think he would have had a second retake. But you can't criticise Mark. He's absolutely you know, spot on in law for, uh, for his more actions. Perhaps should be more vigilant. Um, yeah. Well, obviously. I mean, uh, he's setting the example. If other referees followed Clattenburg, They'd be, we'd all be sat here. Perhaps we'd be out of a job. Uh, in in <laughs> so truth, <right. laughs> it's about being brave and being mentally focused and switched on. Right. Let's look at Mike Dean because I know that regularly he gets praised for consistent performances on, on this show. He was in charge of Manchester City five, Bournemouth one. Uh, real educational point about City's first goal, which was scored by Raheem Sterling, and certain. Experts, pundits said, oh, look at the replay. It should have been disallowed for offside, uh, which it wasn't. A defender had gone 
off the field. He'd just gone straight over the goal line. Now then, what is the law on that, Keith? Uh, if uh, a player in naturally runs off the field, and in this case the defender, then he's regarded in law as standing on the goal line, and therefore he's uh, the, playing the other players on side. And that's the, so the defender, even though he's off the field, is still a defender and counts as a defender. But if he steps off deliberately, that's a different story then, is it? Well, uh, if he steps off deliberately... The, to avoid being the, offside, the, the, or well, not to avoid... Sorry, being no, in that, in that situation, it's still, the goal would still be allowed, but he'd be cautioned. He'd be cautioned. Absolutely, for other, a, an act of unsporting behaviour. Otherwise, you could see them stepping off in order yeah. to get somebody and, offside. And, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was amazing to, to listen to the pundits to say it, it should have been given offside. It's, you know... Yeah. It's one of those, in fairness to them, it, you know, if, you, if you're not a, a practitioner, yeah. you wouldn't perhaps understand that law fully. One minor point that didn't affect the result in that game, the City game, Bournemouth, you had a query over one decision later on. Yeah, I think there was a lot of people saying that there should have been, um, there should have been a penalty in, in, the first, in the first half to City, but in real time, I don't think any referee would have, would have given that. And obviously... They should have had a six goal, which was Bonnie was clearly onside. I don't know what the assistant referee was was doing, or how he made that error. I don't know, but it should have been it should have been six one. Well, nothing too much that's affected the result of games this weekend, other than that one in the game we discussed earlier mm -hmm. in the Premier League with the, the Sunderland defeat mm -hmm. at, uh, at West Brom, which clearly had a, a major impact. Championship. I was at Hillsborough for Sheffield Wednesday against Hull. You were at Turf Moor for Burnley against Bolton. We, Got to pick up a couple of things here. The Hillsborough game was refereed by Keith Stroud, uh, who's trying to rekindle a career in the Premier League. Unfortunately, he got, got injured. He got really clattered late on by a player. Um, Hull substitute Tuba Akpom went almost straight through him from, from behind. How did you see that? I think you're right in describing that he went through him, and I think he did. Uh, and I think but that, was it deliberate? Well, I, I, I think that. Uh, he had the opportunity to avoid, first of all, his first opportunity was to put the brakes on and stop. And so he could have stopped, but he didn't. He continued. He could have moved to the right, could have moved to the left. He went straight through him. I'm in no doubt that he could have avoided Keith Stroud. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, he could have avoided Keith Stroud. Yeah. Clumsy or worse? I, 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 I'd hate to say cynical. Mm -hmm. I, that might be a bit strong, yeah. but I, have, I, I left it... The whole situation left itself open to this type of comment that we're making. Mm -hmm. Could that collision have been avoided? And my view is it could have. The crowd has ever enjoyed it. There's no <laughs> there's never any sympathy for a referee. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a moment of high humour later. I don't think most of the crowd actually saw what happened. I didn't in real time, yeah. I have to say. But he was genuinely hurt, shaken up and hurt, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. If you're not expecting something, uh, and he's not the biggest guy on the block, is he, Keith? Uh, and all of a sudden you know, you hit, then, then you're going to get a response. It's probably going to be out of the game for a bit. Especially when you're static. You're yeah, moving and he was. And you know. Other things to pick up on in that game, the first half was a really nasty challenge from Sam Hutchinson of Sheffield Wednesday. He only saw a yellow for it. Red. Yeah. Absolute I, yeah, red. I think his recognition of that offence, it, 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 was, it wasn't careless, it was... Yeah. It was it, sorry, reckless. It was reckless with excessive force, endangering yeah. the player's safety. So, it should have been sanctioned yeah. with a red card. It's interesting because I understand the, um, the the match observer was looking at the DVD to to see if it was a, definitely a, a red card or, or a, a yellow card. Yeah, and Mike Riley was at the game as well. I wonder what he yeah. thought. <laughs> I noticed you you thought the rep players weren't retreating in line with the old shaving fire. Well, they weren't. And this is a real comment that really niddles me because you know we we at ULRF sort of supported the introduction of the spray. So if the spray goes down, it's very clear players don't go beyond it. And unfortunately, television exposes, as it does many referees' decisions, I thought Keith, on a couple of occasions, should have said, you've gone far enough. Or he allows the play to continue and he cautions for encroachment. And finally, I've got to just bring it to close. Finally, to your game at uh, Tur Turf Moor, good to see Graham Scott back passing a fitness test. He was elevated to the select group last summer. Unfortunately, he got injured. Yeah. Uh, his comeback game, Burnley 2, Bolton 0. In the approach to Burnley's second goal, it looked a clear foul to me. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Neil Lennon raised this this on, on his um, post-match interview and um, 
quite correctly said, it, you know, should have been a free kick. And it was it was a big moment in the game because Bolton were one 0 uh, down, chasing the game and looking like they could get back into the game. And of course, once they've gone two 0 down, they've got they've got no chance. And yes, I think it was a free kick. But I was I was surprised at the appointment because, as, as you said, you rightly say, Graham's been out about six or seven months with a, with an injury. He's had a knee operation to bring him straight back into that game. You know, a big Lancashire derby. It's, you know, you, you don't. You, I mean, when Keeve was in charge, there's there no way he would put you in, in, you know, into that game. You'd come back in League One, League Two, get your get your match fitness, get your game fitness. So you know, it, it was lucky. It was he was lucky. I think Graham was lucky that um, the game. It, it was it was an, it was a non-event. It was a, it was an easy game to referee. What isn't a non-event is what's going to happen at Leeds United. I mean, there's not always something to talk about in the Championship. Sacking Uwe Rosler and goodness me, it's Steve Evans is the manager of well, Leeds. What will well, uh, referees be thinking well, about that? When he was sacked from Rotherham, all the referees were jumping up and down. Now they <laughs> they'll be going. Oh no, not again, not again. <laughs> and Neil Warnock's back as well. He's at QPR, not on a touchline. No. He's a managerial advisor at your club. Oh, it's That's great nice. to see him back because uh, I think Chris Ramsey needs a lot of help and because uh, we're not doing very well. Never a better man to provide it. And uh, on youotherf.com currently, there's an interview I had the pleasure of filming with Neil, uh, Referees and Me, by Neil Warnock talking about his re relationship with referees as player and also manager. Do watch out for that. Meantime, thanks, Keith. Thanks, Mark. And we'll see you again next week. Bye.